glorify the King of Kings in this moment. Why don't you lift up your own song? Why don't you praise Him like He saved you? Why don't you, why don't you praise Him like He rose from the dead? Why don't you praise Him like He can walk in the promises that He won for us on the cross? Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up in this moment, Jesus.
Jesus, your mercy and grace pulled me out of my sin and mistakes. You have never left my side, even when I try to hide or you chase me down. Nothing in this world that could separate us from you. Your love has triumphed over death, so I don't have to fear. Nothing can separate us from you. From you, from you, from you, nothing can separate us from you, from you, from you, from you, from you, nothing can separate us.
Welcome to our Good Friday service here at Nations Church. Hello to you online, wherever you're joining from. We pray that the Lord ministers to you through the stream. If you can hear my voice in the room, why don't you join us here inside? You might find yourself here for the very first time, and I just want to warmly extend a welcome to you. You are welcome in this place. And if you need anything at all, our ushers would love to help you. They're all throughout the room. You might be new to the building. Our toilets are just outside to your left. And before you leave today, if you are new or visiting, please don't rush off. We would love to have a cup of tea or coffee with you in our welcome lounge. And we'd love to put a welcome bag in your bag as you leave. Why don't you stand to your feet? Tonight is going to be a special reflective worship service as we fix our eyes on Jesus this Good Friday. Near the end of the service, we are going to partake communion together. And it's going to be a significant day. So why don't we just engage our faith for a moment as we pray to open the service. Lord, help us to engage our hearts with you today. Help us to not be distracted, worried worried about what's going on to our left or to our right. But may we fix our eyes on you, Jesus, as it says in Hebrews, 
Would we fix our eyes on You, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, which for the joy set before Him endured the cross. And so right now we say, Holy Spirit, would You come? Would You minister to in this room? Would You minister to every heart as we worship You today in spirit and in truth? In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus.
suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry and then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified with the
Thank you. 
Lift your voice and sing that out again. All hail King Jesus. Receive the reward of your suffering tonight, God. Receive the honor to your name. Receive the praise that you deserve. Receive it all. We love you. We worship you. We honor you, Jesus. Oh, God, would you be glorified tonight? Would you be magnified? Be made big in our hearts, we pray. Come on. time just all the voices let's sing that all hail all hail King Jesus all hail King Jesus all hail the Savior of the world all across this room. We honor you, Lord. We thank you that you're here. We haven't come tonight out of religious obligation. We have come tonight to encounter you, Jesus. We've come to behold you. We've come to offer our worship to you. We've come to bring you something that's costly to us, but pleasing to you. I pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people tonight. I ask that the glory of the Lord would sweep through this room. I ask, Father God, whether it's our first time at Nations Church or we've been part of this church since it began, I ask, Lord, for a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ to be released in this house. Would we behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Would our hearts burn with love once again? Would we come back into alignment and give you the praise and honour and glory you deserve? We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Can we just give Jesus a mighty clap offering right now? Come on. Just from your lips, would you honor the King of glory? We love you, Lord. Jesus, you're so good. So good. Well, how good is it to be here at our 3 p.m. Good Friday service? A huge welcome to those in the room as well as those watching online. My name's Matt. So grateful you could come out and worship Jesus with us tonight. And I just so believe... As we gather together, there is a fresh revelation of Jesus coming your way, whether you're in this room or watching online. And so I want to invite you just to take your seat right where you are. You know, normally in our services at this point, we would love to welcome our new people and make a big fuss, but we we still do have a gift bag. If you're new or visiting here today, after the service, as you head outside, literally out those doors, there'll be some welcome bags as a gift, a bottle of water, a bit of information about our church. Please grab one of them. We'll have our welcome lounge open after the service. Come over, grab a tea or coffee on us. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to uh, get to know you. And uh, we'd like to extend that invitation to you also. And so that will be happening after the service. But we're just going to, as it is our communion reflective service tonight, we're going to jump straight into the Word of God. And then we're going to worship some more. Does anyone here love worshiping Jesus? 
How amazing is His presence, amen? Um, I want to take us to a passage of Scripture tonight found in the book of John. And it records this. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 26, John answered them, answered the people, the onlookers, and he said this, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Verse number 29, the next day, someone say the next day. He saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Man, that did my heart good just hearing that. John sees Jesus coming toward him. John the Baptist, the one that prepared the way for Jesus, telling people to repent of their sin. And then the one they were waiting for arrives on the scene. And John's public declaration to every onlooker in that moment was simply this, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My prayer for you and for me tonight is that we would once again behold the Lamb of God who takes away not only the sin of the world, but He took away my sin and He takes away your sin also. So the title of this exhortation tonight and actually the theme of our Easter this year at Nations Church is simply this Saviour and King. And I pray this would be more than a nice cute message on a card in the foyer or in your pocket or on the screen. I pray this would be a revelation that rattles you inside, that it will be a revelation that burns your heart, that no matter where you're at today, whether it's your first time in church or maybe you've been following Jesus for a while, I pray that there'd be a fresh revelation of Jesus for you, that you'd fall in love again and that you would give your love back to Him. Amen. Hey, can we just join in prayer one last time? If you're comfortable, just close your eyes. Lift your hands even if you're comfortable too, as well as online. Just close your eyes where you are. Father, we thank you. Would a revelation sweep through this house? Would we behold the Lamb of God? Would we revere you as our Savior and respond to you as our King? We love you so much, God, and I thank you. Would this not just be a nice talk? Would this be an encounter with the Christ, the Son of the living God? In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen. Come on, let's just give God one more clap of praise. Amen. Amen. You're so good, God. Can we do better than that? Let's lift up a clap of praise to God. So good. Hey, thank you so much, team. Saviour and King. Well, um, my name is Matt and my wife and I, Sydney, we get to oversee the youth and young adults at our church. And I remember a few years ago, I was actually... Uh, doing an internship in youth ministry uh, at a church in New Zealand. And um, it was really cool because this church had New Zealand's Got Talent hire out their building to film their production right there. And so every week we had this big production come through. We had these guests come. We, you know, pr- like pr- professional artists and all that stuff. And I remember because I was an intern at church, you kind of means you do everything. And so I, I was cleaning up. Don't, don't let that deter you from signing up for Nations College. We look after you these days. This was in the past before we repented. Um, and so I was doing everything. And I remember there was a green room set up for the guest uh, speaker. Sorry, not the guest speaker, the guest artist that night, which was Jessica Malboy. And so she'd flown over from Australia. And I thought to myself, being the good intern that I am, I'm going to go in the room and I'm going to clean it up just to make sure it's all good. And I get in there and I see someone, classic, somebody has left their coffee cup half filled in the room. You know you're in a church when there's coffees everywhere. And so I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to be a good intern. And so I picked it up. However, in the process of picking it up, I knocked it over and spilled coffee everywhere. And so now I've got a situation where Coffee is spilled everywhere. It's uh, the, the room that the, the, the guests are coming to. And so I go and do the sensible thing. I get napkins. I clean it up. I wash it over. And I've got my hands. Are like, have you ever had sticky coffee hands before? They were like dripping with coffee. I put the, 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 the napkins in the bin. I try to make it. And I'm like, man, I need to go clean myself up. And so I go and open the door to go clean the room. And as I open the door, you wouldn't believe who's standing there. Jessica Malboy. She's got all of her security and posse. I have this moment where I look at her and she thinks in her mind, oh, this is the door greeter opening the door for me. And so very confidently, she stretched out her hand and goes, hi, I'm Jess. I had a decision to make in this moment. And unfortunately, I made the wrong one. 
And so very confidently, I stretched out my hand back, full of sticky coffee and grossness, and I shook her hand and said, hi, Jess, I'm Matt. (laughs) I let go. She was like, looked a bit confused. I walked off. She walked in. And that was the last time I saw Jessica Malboy in person. (laughs) She didn't ask for me again. I don't know what happened. She hasn't answered my texts or calls, though I don't even have a number. But have you ever had a time in your life that you wanted to make a good impression, a good first impression, and it didn't quite go your way? How many of us know first impressions are so important? First impressions have the ability to make a relationship or ruin a relationship. My first impression of Jessica Malbo, it, it wasn't who I wanted to present myself as, Matt, the sticky coffee guy. That is not what I was going for. And then we, we look into this passage of Scripture here, and we see that John gives a first impression glimpse into who the Messiah is. And what's interesting is I think about the importance of first impressions, and I think, man, it's so important you communicate who you are, give a great representation. And John, he could have said anything about Jesus in this moment. He could have said, behold, here comes the king of the world. And he would have been 100% correct. He could have said, behold, here comes the God of all creation. And he would have been theologically accurate. But we see in this passage of scripture, John chooses a peculiar description to introduce Jesus to the world. And it was this, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, we hear the word Lamb of God, and in our modern day society, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but to the first century Israelite that heard this, the Lamb of God had a connotation to it. See, they understood that the Lamb of God was the sacrifice that would be made that covers people's sin. See, when the nation of Israel was ex- uh, had an exodus from Egypt, the night before the exodus, God commanded every Household to take a lamb, one year old, unblemished, without spot. They would sacrifice that lamb. And they would put the blood of that lamb on the doorposts of the house. And that night as the plague washed over the land of Israel, uh, sorry, of Egypt, killing the firstborn son, the plague would simply pass over the houses with the blood was on the door. They understood that the lamb that was sacrificed would cover people's sins, protecting them from consequence. So John in this passage is saying, hey, look, behold, here he is. Yes, he's the king of glory. Yes, he's the God of all creation. But let me introduce you to him today. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Where in the Old Testament, the blood of the Lamb would only cover their sin. The blood of our precious Messiah, Jesus Christ, doesn't just cover your sin. It removes your sin from you as far as the east is from the west. It takes away your penalty, your shame, your destruction, everything that separates you from God. Jesus is introduced to us as the Lamb who takes it away. John is effectively saying, behold, here is your Saviour. He chooses to introduce Jesus to us as a savior. In fact, that's why the angel said to Joseph in the book of Matthew chapter 1, talking about Mary, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The introduction of Jesus introduced us, humanity, to a savior who will take away the sins of the earth. And I want to submit to you tonight at this 3 p.m. service, I want to submit to you online today that when you get a revelation of Jesus as your Savior, when you realize Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away your sin, when you capture a glimpse of His saving power, the only appropriate response is to make Him your King. That when you behold the saving power of Jesus, the only appropriate response is to make him your king. See, Christ was our Passover lamb. He was sinless. He was spotless. He was without blemish. He was the only perfect sacrifice that could take away sin. And just like they killed the lambs in the Old Testament to cover a family, our lamb went to a Roman cross and died. And they beat him, they spat upon him, they mocked him, they tore out his beard, 
They tied him to a post and whipped him over and over and over again. And the blood began to shed from his body, just like the blood of the lamb in the Old Testament would be shed. The blood of our Lord was shed as he tied to that post. And then they took him from that post. They strapped a Roman cross to his back, that very same back with no skin on it. Exhausted, he carried this splintered cross up this hill called the Skull or Golgotha. And there at the top of the hill, our Lamb, the Lamb of God, who doesn't just cover but takes away the sin, he laid himself down. The one with the authority to raise up any life chose to raise his own life down. He stretched out his hand. And there at the top of that hill, he let people whom he created pierce his hands and his feet with nails. They placed a crown of thorn on his heads and it sunk into his brow. He was crucified. Our lamb, the lamb of God, our savior, the savior of the world, died a sinner's death on a Roman cross. I want to invite you tonight as we partake of communion in a few moments time to behold again the Lamb of God. Have a look at Him because the marks that are on His body has your name in mind. The wounds that are on His back has your mental health being restored in mind. The pierced hands, the the thorns, the beating, the mocking, He had you in mind. It wasn't just the Lamb of God that takes away the world's sin. It takes away your sin too. I want to invite us as a church, and I believe tonight prophetically, the Lord is inviting every one of us, whether we're here for the first time or this is our church, to behold again and to get a fresh revelation of the Lamb. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Because when, when you and I see him, see the Savior, see the blood, the price that was paid for you and I as we behold him, our only appropriate response is to make him our king. That Jesus came in as a Savior and he died on a cross, but he rose again and he's coming back as a king. Jesus is coming back, friend. This life is finite, but eternity is forever. And Jesus, the King of all kings, wants you to not only have an encounter with Him as your Savior, but experience the power of making Him your King. See, when you experience the saving grace, kingship's just normal. Peter, who wasn't a believer, who wasn't a disciple by this point, he was a fisherman. He just toiled all night didn't catch anything. And then Jesus tells him, hey, throw your nets over the other side. Exhausted as he was, he decides to obey this person he doesn't even know. And he catches so many fish that he can't even lug it in. Jesus does a miracle for Peter. Jesus literally saves Peter from a fruitless life. He saves Peter from financial ruin. And he gives Peter a miraculous catch of fish. And at the revelation of the saving grace of Jesus, what does Peter do? He falls to his knees. And he calls Jesus his Lord and says, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. At the revelation of his saving grace became a response of kingship from Peter. We see Thomas, known as the doubting disciple. People started claiming they'd seen Jesus risen from the dead. And he said, I will not believe unless I see the wounds, unless I place my finger in the holes in his hands. Only then will I have faith. And the Bible records eight days later, the risen Christ shows up to a doubting Thomas and says, here, look at my hands. Here, look at my side. Place your finger there. I was dead, but I am alive. Have not doubt, but believe. And what does Thomas do? From seeing the holes in Jesus' hand, from seeing the spear mark in his side, from getting a revelation of the Lamb, what does Thomas say? He says, my Lord and my God. In other words, at the revelation of your saving power, you are now my King. You are now my God. You are now my Lord. You are now in charge of my life. Or even more, a Roman centurion who wasn't even from the nation of Israel, who oversaw the crucifixion of Jesus. And as 
his soldier buddies were gambling and throwing dice for Jesus' clothes. He looked there and he saw the lamb. He saw the blood that was shed. He saw the beaten, bruised lamb of God. He saw the earthquake. He saw the clouds go dark. And the Bible says this Roman at the revelation of who Jesus was says he worshipped God. And said, surely this was the Son of God. See, when you get a glimpse of his saving grace, making him king is your only response. And in a few moments' time, we're going to partake of communion together. But before we do, I want to invite every single one of you in this place to allow your heart to reflect again and get a glimpse of the Son of Suffering, our Jesus. He's more than just a story told at Easter time. He's real. He's alive. He's in this room. And he's here tonight to reveal himself to you. Our team has prepared a, a wonderful video with a, an amazing poem and spoken word that captures this Savior and this King. And I want to invite us to turn our eyes to the screen and watch that. But as we do, don't just watch it and tick the box of, yeah, let's watch the video so we can get out of here and go to the next thing. No. I pray that as we watch this, these words would shake our heart. And as you look upon the Lamb of God, you would get a fresh revelation of Jesus tonight. You would behold the Savior and the King who died for you. Thank you, team. Why don't we show that video now? Our King surpasses all others in worth. Every King merits honor, glory, and praise. Our King does not seek these accolades for himself. Instead, his praises resound through creation. Despite deserving the highest seat in heaven, he humbly entered the lowest point on earth. Beginning as a vulnerable babe, he showcased the power of his humanity. He willingly went to the cross, enduring crushing, bruising, and beating. While some kings boast titles, badges, and accolades, Owls bore nakedness and wore scars as badges of honor. Though his hands deserved the greatest wealth, he extended them to be pierced for us. He took on our pain, our shame, wearing a crown of thorns so that we might be made whole. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. The King of Glory, the King of Kings, died as a sinner. He laid down his life, receiving mockery instead of praise, humiliation instead of adoration, and a crown of thorns instead of one adorned with gold. Hanging on that cross, he breathed his last. The one who gave creation its breath experienced the end of his own. And there our King died, his thorn-pierced crown hanging. Our King died. This is greatness. A rumble, a tremor, the ground shook, the heavens tore open, the earth broke. The stone rolled away, the tomb opened, and the one who was once lain broken came alive. The breath that departed returned, the hands once pierced now pushed him up. Our king arose, defeating death, the grave, and all its terrors. In silence he died, in resounding noise he arose. In shame he was laid down, in glory he awoke. The crown of thorns once adorned his brow, now a crown of glory graces his head. On his robe, it is written, King of all kings, Lord of all lords. The bread, his broken body. The cup, his blood shed. On the third day, he rose, splitting time itself. Looking upon his creation, he declared, You are mine. On Friday, he went down, and no song did we sing. On Friday he went down, and he felt death's sting. But on the third he arose, and the song of creation we now bring. 
we crown him now both our savior and our king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes all across this room and online. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. The Lord instituted communion where we partake of bread and we drink a cup of juice. But the power is that who we remember when we do it. That this was the price that was paid for you and I. This was the price that was paid to ransom us from all of our sins, both our mistakes and our willing choices that lead us astray. He took upon himself. Jesus Christ, the living God, died. A sinner's death on that Roman cross. And he rose again on the third, defeating sin, the death, and the grave. And I believe tonight he is inviting us into a fresh revelation of this message, a fresh revelation of this grace. As we partake of communion tonight, there is an invitation for you to get a fresh glimpse, a fresh revelation of Jesus, not just the Savior of the world, but Jesus, your Savior, the one who saves you from your world, from your world of mistakes. And as we get a glimpse of this revelation, our appropriate response tonight, church, will be just to adorn him as our king to worship Him, to take our alabaster jar of our heart and begin to pour it out upon Him. So I invite everyone to stand to your feet all across this place. We've got in front of every section of chairs a communion table. And in just a moment, our band's going to sing this song called The Son of Suffering. And I want to invite you row by row to come out. If you're comfortable and grab a piece of communion we've got them in baskets please don't grab the loaf of bread but grab the uh, actual communion emblem provided and head back to your seat and we're going to take communion together as a family tonight but as we come and take communion i want to make it personal to you i want you to consider in your heart i want your heart to ponder who Jesus means to you, what he's done for you. Do you remember where your life once was? I believe there's a fresh revelation for you tonight of Jesus in this communion moment. So if you're on the left side of the room, head out your left and come around and go into your right. If you're on the right side of the room, head out your right and come and then go back and that way that will manage it the best way. But if you could start right now, just from the front row and then the second row and the third. And Ben, can we just sing this song together? Oh, the perfect son of God in all his innocence he's walking in the dirt with you and me he knows what living is he's acquainted with our grief a man of sorrow son of suffering sing it again oh the perfect son of god in all his innocence he's walking in the dirt with you and me he knows what living is as you're in your seat just behold he's the Lord to with our grief. you can lift your hands if you want a man of sorrow, you can sing the song the lyrics on the screen but just behold the Lord behold the Lamb the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world your Lamb your Savior, your God, God who weeps. your King. There's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me.
Don't take uh, communion yet. We're just going to hold all that and take it together as a church in a moment. So just if you haven't already, just hold the communion in your hand. Let's just behold the Lord together. Jesus. To the sinner you were graced. To the broken you embraced. And in the end the proof is in your Proof is in yours, but in tears, how can it be? But there's a God who weeps, there's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. this week, I just have so sensed in my heart that as we eat and as we drink as a church, there'll be a fresh revealing of Jesus that comes to you. In Luke 24, Jesus had risen from the dead and he arrived where two disciples were on the road to Emmaus and he started to walk and talk with them, though they did not recognize who he was. And then as they neared the village, they invited Jesus in and It says, as they sat down to eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, 
He disappeared. I believe and prophesy tonight that as we partake of communion, there will be a suddenly moment in your life where the Jesus that has been with you this whole time, the God that's been walking by your side through the previous weeks and months and journey, whether it's a mountaintop or a valley low, the God who is with you as you eat, like the disciples partook of that bread, a fresh revelation of Jesus comes. A fresh revelation of Christ is gonna fill your heart. And when we behold Him, the only appropriate response is to lavish our worship back unto Him. When you get a glimpse of Him, like Peter, you might fall to your knees. Like Thomas, you might say, my God, my King. Like the centurion in front of other people whom he had a reputation, you might begin to worship God. I would invite you tonight as we partake of communion. I just wanna give you freedom in this place to worship the Lord in whichever way you feel led to. You might wanna get on your knees. You might need to lie down. You might need to sit down. You might just need to quietly ponder. But I believe as a fresh revelation of Him comes, let's honour Him. Let's adore Him. Let's praise Him as our King. For He died and is our Saviour, but He rose again. And He's not only Saviour, He is Saviour and King. So would you take those emblems in your hand right now? Jesus, we thank You. We thank You so much for Your body that was broken. We thank You for Your blood that was shed. Oh God, how grateful we are for the price that You paid. I ask, Father, let a revelation of Jesus fill this room. As we partake of You tonight, would an encounter with the risen Christ come? Would sick bodies be healed? Would mental health be restored? Would we fall in love again in the Name of Jesus? Amen. Come on, let's eat, let's drink, let's worship God tonight. Oh, El King Jesus, oh, El the Lord of heaven and earth, oh, El King Jesus, oh.
everyone to keep your eyes closed in this moment. And I want to give an invitation of response to people that are in this room tonight. And maybe for the first time, you need to make a decision to not just know about Jesus, know about the saving grace of God, but make this Savior your King. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. The way to salvation is simple. It's coming to the one who saves your soul from the eternal consequence of sin and saying, Jesus, become my King. Become my Lord. I give my life back to you today. And maybe you've never made this decision. I believe right now in this room, God is knocking on the doors of people's hearts. This is your moment. We're going to pause this service to say a prayer. And if you want to be included in this prayer, all you need to do is lift your hand in just a moment. I'll see it. And we'll include you in this prayer and invite Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. And another group of people, I feel there's a few people in this room today. And you already know about Jesus. You've already believed in the gospel at one stage. You already have heard that He died on a cross. But if you're honest with yourself tonight, Jesus is not your Lord. Other things have been your Lord. I believe there's an invitation for you tonight to repent and come back to God and reinstate Him as your King once more. This King went to the cross. He died. He rose again. He did it all with you in mind. And I believe even right now in this moment, that tug on your heart, the butterflies in your heart, that's Him, the same King that left heaven to come to earth to die on a cross for you is invading this room right now, tugging on your heart, knocking on the door of your heart, saying, that's me, would you let me in? Jesus is in this room tonight and He's knocking He's knocking. He's knocking. The Bible says if anyone hears His voice and opens the door, He will come in and make His home with them. Jesus is not going to force His way into your life. Salvation is available, but He's not going to force or encroach it on you. But if you're willing to humbly respond and say, that's me, I want to make Jesus not only my Saviour, I want to make Him my King. I want to make Him my Lord on the count of three. What I want you to do is lift your hand high. I'll see it and you pop it straight back down. All I'm going to do is include you in a prayer. Then after the service, you'll be able to help yourself to a gift bag if you want to. But just so I know who I'm praying for, would you respond in this moment on the count of three? Online as well, right where you are, whether you're sitting and watching this on your couch or you're on a bus somewhere listening to this, I want to encourage you, would you right there lift up your hand too as a sign to God that you're saying, that's me. I want to make Jesus not only my Saviour, I see what He's done, but I want Him to become my King also, on the count of three, would you lift your hand? One, two, three. Just slip up that hand. Awesome. Thank you. I see that hand over there. Praise God for that. I see that hand over there. Well done. Thank you so much. Praise God. That's amazing. So good. So good. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Just slip up your hand right now. We'll give space just to include you in this prayer. We're not going to Bible bash you. We just want to introduce you to Jesus. Salvation is not a 12-step process. It's one step. Come to know the Lord. He's here today. If you're wrestling, this is your moment. Would you lift your hand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, awesome. I see your hand, sir. Thank you so much. God sees your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like there might be two or three. I'm happy to wait if there isn't, but just for the next 30 seconds, if that's you. If you're in the Valley of Decision, I want to encourage you, not just come to an Easter service this year. Come and encounter the Jesus that died for you on a cross. He loves you and He wants to reveal Himself to you right now. Would you just lift that hand if that's you? You're feeling stirred to make Him your Lord for the first time or maybe you've fallen away. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I see your hand down here. Praise God for you. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I feel like there is two more people. If that's you, just lift up your hand right now. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus is tugging on people's hearts. He loves you so much. The love of God is so real. It's so real. He knocks at the door. He's so kind. He's such a patient king. Just looking around this room one more time. If there's anyone else you want to make this decision, just lift up that hand nice and high. You can wave it at me. I'll see it. You pop it straight back down. I just want to include you in this prayer to introduce you to Jesus. Yeah, awesome. I thank you. I see your hand there. Amazing. Amazing. Just in case there's one more person you're here tonight, I did feel like there was... It's, oh, I'm happy to move on if not, but if you are in the valley, just, just know God's pausing the service for you. That's you. Just lift your hand nice and high. See it, and then we'll move right on. Thank you, Jesus. Christians, you just pray with me as people, many people are making this decision today. It's beautiful. It's the best decision ever. So it is a bit dark. So if that is you, just, just wave your hand just so I can see it. Slip it up nice and high. I'll see it, and you pop straight back down. Just looking around. Last few moments. 
three, two, one. Awesome. I don't see any more hands, but what we're going to do is we're going to pray this prayer together. And as a whole church, let's just repeat these words. And it's not the words that saves, it's Jesus, but the words just introduce us to Him. So come on, all across this place. In fact, I want to just invite everyone, if you're able to, would you just stand to your feet with me all across this place? We're going to say this prayer together. You can place your hand on your heart if you're comfortable, but say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank You that You died. I thank You that You rose again. I give my life back to You. Come be my Lord. Come be my Saviour. Come be my friend. Come be my King. I give You charge over my life. Thank You for saving me. I give my life to You. And teach me to follow You each and every day. In Jesus' Name. And everyone said, Come on, let's just give Jesus a mighty clap of praise. So good. Oh, come on, just praise God right now. He's so wonderful. Jesus. Now, if that is you and you made that decision, like I said, there'll be some gift bags available in the foyer. Just got a Bible in there and uh, a bit of a gift as well. But I want to encourage you, you know, making a decision to follow Jesus, it's imperative you get other people around you in your life that are also following Jesus. So if you're not part of a church, I want to invite you to come and be a part of this church. We meet every Sunday, 9, 11, and 5 p.m. Or if there's a church near you that works better, go to that church. But get around believers that are going to follow Jesus alongside you. We need one another. And uh, I, I hope that you've had a fresh revelation and a fresh encounter of Christ this Easter time. And so one last time, is right? can we just worship one more time, team? Come on, why don't you just lift your hands. Let's go out praising Jesus, giving Him the honour, the glory, and the praise He's worth. He's so wonderful. Come on, would you sing, church? Oh, come on, pour out your heart to the Lord. Don't be embarrassed. It's time to get our alabaster jar. Pour it out upon Him. It's pleasing to Him. Let's sing that out. Oh, hail. Oh, hail. Let yourself go. Oh, we love you, Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. take that for granted. I pray, Jesus, that this Easter would be so significant to so many, 
not just a weekend with public holidays, but a time to fix our eyes on Jesus and receive a fresh revelation of who He is as our Saviour and our King. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Can we give Him praise from your heart with gratefulness and thanksgiving and honour? You are magnificent, Lord, and we glorify You today as Your church. We're so grateful that You've joined us this Easter and we pray that You've met with Jesus today. If you didn't make a decision to follow Jesus today because you have too many questions, you have questions about faith, we would love to have that conversation with you. We have so many trusted leaders in our welcome lounge out these doors. Don't leave tonight without asking some of those questions that might be burning in your heart. If this is your first time that you've joined us here at Nations Church, we would love to get to know you in the same place, the welcome lounge outside those doors. And please don't leave without grabbing a welcome bag It has a little bit of information about our church. We'd love to put that in your hands on your way out. If you have kids in our kids' programs, I'm going to invite you now to go check those out. And one last thing is this is Good Friday, but who knows, we have Easter Sunday in a couple of days' time and we are truly going to be celebrating Jesus, the risen Saviour, with baptism service here at our Maori campus, 9, 11 and 5 p.m. So much fun for the kids, hot cross buns, after the service for the whole family. So make it a priority to be in church. Don't come alone. And we actually have a little bit of space. So if you do not need to rush off, I wanna invite you to take a couple of moments this Easter just to worship Jesus, keep your eyes on Him. You're welcome to stay and linger for a bit of worship. Otherwise, check your kids out. Be blessed online. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful Easter.